Hello, friends of Golf Course Quality Fertilizer. Well, I'm getting ready to do a mix and spray video that's going to blow your mind. We're going to kill some clover. It's going to be awesome. I'm super excited about giving you some tips that, uh, you know, I, as a, a professional that's done it for 36 years, I mean, it's easy for me. It's hard for me to not understand why a certain person's not killing a certain weed. And so I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. Uh, and struggling because it's probably been one of my nemesis having my own business is people struggling with killing their weeds. Uh, and so I want to give you this awesome video and it's going to be so fun because you're going to finally have success and everybody's going to be happy, especially me, because I like you to have a nice clean lawn. So here we're going to go. There's actually going to be uh, six total steps to this. We're going to start off first talking about our mowing and why waiting a couple days after you've mowed uh, is important to do be successful on spraying weeds, especially things like clover and stuff like that, where they have all these leaves that are kind of sitting at the top surface. And if you clip them all off, we're going to get a whole lot less herbicide in that plant, which by the way, just because you cut its top, it's still just as strong. It's got this root and it's got the crown, the life source of that plant. Leaves are just leaves. I mean, I've watched leaves fall off the trees all the time. They don't mean nothing, but they are the avenue, the tunnel to get in enough herbicide to desiccate that plant, right? And there's a couple of things we got to think about. So, I mean, if it's a dandelion, it's really easy. It only has one little life source to kill, right? And so that's why dandelions are pretty easy to kill because it only has a taproot and that's it. And it doesn't spread off and create new plants. On a clover plant, for example, those rhizominous type plants, uh, and there's multiple kinds like that, uh, Canadian thistle and things like that, uh, ground ivy, these guys, every little segment in that root creates a whole new plant. And so if you spray herbicide on it, you have to kill every single little segment in order to be successful at it not coming back. That sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, it is hard. But multiple applications and doing that application just right, you're going to be successful. Now, there's only a few places because of the way that plant pathology works, how water works through the plants. And this is the reason why, too, that if you cut it, uh, it starts gushing out all this water through the top and it's pushing the herbicides away from getting in the plant, right? And so if you're going to water, and this is the second part, you have to water at least 24 hours before. You don't have to, but you want at least 24 hours before uh, you spray that be no water on it, no rain. And that's probably the biggest tip for clover. That's the one that probably everybody is missing on is they're watering probably the morning of when they're spraying. And here's the thing with clover. It's very good at absorbing water and pushing it through its system and detoxifying itself, right? And so if you water that morning, it's already pushing the herbicide away that you're spraying on it right there, right? Now, if I wait 24 hours, now it's actually trying to get some moisture. It's like, oh, I might need a little bit more moisture. I'm more balanced. It's kind of like uh, osmosis, right? When you got more on this side and, and less on this side, it'll gravitate to balance itself out. So it's in that sense, in order to let that thing soak in more herbicide and be more apt to soak in herbicide, we want to wait or have it be dry 24 hours before and 24 hours after. And then when the, the mowing too, like I said, wait two days after to spray. So you mow two days later, you'll spray. And then you actually want to wait two more days to spray or to, to mow again. Reason why we're waiting at the end of that mowing cycle, I know I'm going back and forth, but this is important to listen to, is more often we're going to let that herbicide sit on that leaf and continue to get pulled down slowly because it goes slow down and it works fast up, right? And so slowly it can pull down and get that herbicide in the crown and in the root and through as many segments as we can before we start cutting off and taking away the herbicide to be able to keep getting into the system because it will continue to soak into that plant through that whole duration of time, right? It'll dry and now it can't get washed away. And that's the water part after, right? We want to not wash away as much herbicide as possible. This guy here says it's three hour rain fast. 
uh, but still having 24 hours of dry time of it, continually soaking in, really locking into that plant. Uh, that way you'll get most of that down into the root system, right? And so those are really good tips. Mowing and watering, you change those things, you'll be successful even if you're messing up on other places. And I'm telling you, the most important part is letting it be dry 24 hours at least before you spray. That'll, be, that'll help you with, with your bent grass, with your clover, with everything you're spraying, it's gonna help a lot, right? Okay, let's also talk about uh, coming back to spray again. So clover is one of those guys that you will have to come back in two weeks, three weeks, and give it another dose, right? Because especially if you're near a lake or something like that, and in some situations on the lake, you're never gonna be able to kill it because it's got water constantly coming up from this very shallow uh, water table, just constantly feeding the clover water. So it's gonna push herbicide out constantly, right? So it might be almost impossible in those situations to kill it. But like with clover, we gotta worry about the water and overwatering through the year. And it might come back through the next seasons. Everybody's like, well, I killed all my clover and here it's been two years. Why did I all of a sudden get clover again? You have, like I said before, thousands and thousands of seeds from your old clover and from where it came from in the first place, sitting in that soil and it can wait there for 40 years or the right conditions to do it again. The best way to keep it away is thick turf and don't water as much, as least as you can. I, and that means frequency, not the amount that you're putting down when you do it, but try to do it as least often as you can. Uh, this year, by the way, we're at eight waterings, so I tied my lowest amount of watering. It's supposed to rain tonight, I hope it does. If not, I'm gonna water a ninth time. Uh, and then we're gonna be getting close to the middle of September. Maybe I won't have to water for the rest of the year, we'll see. But anyways, back to the herbicides here. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so rates. If you're struggling with a certain weed, especially like a clover or something, always refer back to, and you've already sprayed it and it just wasn't working, always refer back to your label and look up that particular weed because there might be some specifics in there talking about what your herbicide might need to do extra in order to help desiccate that certain weed that you're talking about, right? And so it might say, hey, uh, in, in the case of T-Zone for violets, for example, right? And violets are super hard to kill and most people can't kill them. Uh, but this says to do it right after they flower in the spring and then hit them again in the fall. And it actually says it's best to start in the fall, late fall, doing a spray on them and then coming back in the spring after they've flowered and hitting them one more time in that zone. So there's timing on certain weeds that you need to do that'll be more successful on that. So always go back to your label. But also make sure you're looking at your rates. In this one in particular, it says 1.2 to 1.5. So this is not a very large variable rate product. Uh, most of them will say you can do a half ounce to two ounces, you know, or something like that. And so you got to look at your particular weed. It might need the two ounce rate at the top end, right? And so make sure you're doing the correct rate. Make sure that you know what your measuring cup is, right? And so in particular with this one, it's a one ounce measuring cup. And so in order to mix a gallon with this product at the 1.5, you'd have to fill this up one and a half times per one gallon of water, right? And then that will be your right rate. And then you can be adding in some dish soap and all that stuff, but rates are super important, right? And so make sure you got the right rate. Now let's talk about how to mix it. Mixing is actually important as well. Uh, there's certain products I got to mix together that I have to mix them in a certain order. Right? When we mix these big expensive tanks, I would have to put this product in first or it would act weird with another product behind it. And so it could be real complicated. This is easy for you guys. We got one product typically and maybe a little bit of dish soap uh, and then we're ready to rock. So I always fill up my sprayer halfway full first. Then I go around and I spray with it, make sure it's working before I have a herbicide or a chemical in there or an insecticide, anything. So I make sure it's working crop properly and I'll check it out and make sure it's spraying. Okay, it's working properly, right? This is an electric one. Uh, matter of fact, let's pause and we're gonna go out into the yard and I'm gonna show you. All right, so, you know, uh, when it comes to how to spray and how much to get on the plant, typically if you're doing the right, correct rate, all you wanna do is get all the leaves on that plant wet. You don't want to soak it till it starts soaking into the ground. A lot of times that might be too high a rate and you're starting to kill some grass on that. Most of it, if, especially at the right rate, you're just spraying it till that plant gets wet. So let's look at that weed right there. I mean, just like boom, okay, that's all wet, right? Now that's not too much. This, that's too much, 
right? You don't do that. So, and there's certain things you want to do in order to spray the right rate. I also like to adjust my, my little sprayer nozzle and so that it sprays more of a shotgun pattern. See how that's kind of like a stream out and then it kind of hits like a shotgun on the ground there. See that? So that way I don't have to bend over. You definitely don't want to take it all the way down to this cone situation where it's like, okay, it's just misting out of there. Plus what I like about it being bigger too is I see that mist right there. If I get a little bit bigger, I'll start having a lot less mist. There we go. No mist, right? Because I don't want it to travel other places too, right? And so what I'll do is I'll fill it halfway with water. I'll come out and I'll make sure I have my adjustments correctly so I don't have to play with it. I mean, I got water on my hands, right? So I don't want to have herbicide on my hands messing with that. You can put on gloves, of course. That's a smart idea to put on gloves while you're actually applying, right? And so you'll fill it up halfway. Then you'll put in for, if they're doing one gallon, you'll do an ounce and a half of the T zone. You'll pour that in while it's halfway full. That way it doesn't get stuck to the bottom and all that stuff. And then you'll go ahead and add in your little bit of dish soap. And then you'll finish filling your other half a gallon in there. And then you give it a little shake and you're ready to spray. So it's pretty easy doing that part. Just making sure you got the right rate and got it done. All right. So if I'm doing an area, and let's pretend that this was, there's some clover in this little spot, right? That's what I like about it just being water in here. I don't have to worry about puppy dogs. You don't want to do it around the dogs. You want it to dry before the puppy dogs come out, no matter what you're using. You want it to dry before your kids, you, or your puppy dogs come back in that area. If I'm doing clover, I'm going to go across the area like this and kind of paint the area. And then with clover in particular, I'll turn myself around and I'll actually hit it in the reverse as well because it hides down in the grass and you got to get as much of the herbicide on it as possible. And so it's almost like a 2x application, but uh, the grass can handle it. Uh, so I hope you listen to my tips. Uh, is there anything else, Rachel, that you're thinking of? Just do that and you're going to have some awesome success on killing clover, dandelions, violets, all that stuff. If you need more tips, contact me. But right now is the time to start spraying for weeds from now until the end of October, uh, even into November if it's warm enough. Let's hope we don't have a too warm of a uh, October. We'll get diseases. So we'll see you later. Thanks for listening. Kill some weeds.